this video was created by Jessica Lipshu. Um, it is, is very rare, and I'm sure many of you have experienced this before, where one video takes you off of the fence on a topic, something you may have been observing and you did not know about, you weren't sure about, and it pushes you one way or the other. Uh, I understand that I'm not an astrophysicist, okay? But in my job, I do a lot of geometry. It's this point, that point. <clears throat> what's the what's the waypoint or the uh, elevation? Up, down, left, right. Uh, multiple points. 15 points. Where do they converge? Where do they... I think you see my point, okay? You might think that that has nothing to do with being able to do math in a... Uh, astronomical sense math is math okay all right guys and this video really impacted me and I really wanted to share it with you I'm gonna go ahead and let these NASA scientists give their analysis on this new information that they're sharing about planet 9 or Nibiru or planet X and I'm gonna let them go ahead and dig their own hole <clears throat> and then at the end I'm going to go ahead and let you know what it is that I'm seeing and hearing because this impacted me in a big way. Uh, Rich, I called Rich Guz right away, and I'm like, Rich, I have a problem here. <laughs> I have a problem. And um, called a couple other people, and I'm like, we have a major issue. And Rich understood exactly what I was saying. I, he finished my sentence. Bravo. Bravo. Anyways, let's go ahead and play this. I apologize for running my mouth for so long. Let's do this. Thank you, Jessica. If Planet X is out there, we'll find it together. Or we'll determine an alternate explanation for the data that we've received so far. Scientists have discovered some out-of-this-world information. The solar system may have an extra planet to what was thought before. According to research, it's thought to be about 10 times bigger than Earth and would make it the ninth planet. We found that the, the only explanation we can come up with for some very strange behavior at the edge of our solar system is that there's a giant planet, a, a planet that's 10 times the mass of the Earth that is much, much further out than, than, than Neptune on this very elliptical orbit. Computer simulations show that the mystery planet, if it exists, would orbit about 20 times further away from the Sun than Earth. However, so far, the planet hasn't yet been observed directly. We haven't seen it yet, but we've seen its gravitational influence on the outer part of our solar system. So we, we know it's there. We're starting to look. Brown and his colleague modeled the hypothetical planet's gravitational effects on several known bodies in the region and found a near-perfect match, which he described as a jaw-dropping moment. We went back and looked at the, at the catalogs of objects, and they were perfectly, exactly where we predicted that they were supposed to be. That's the moment when my jaw hit the floor and I was, I was stunned. Now the search is on to find this mystery planet in the universe's biggest game of hide and seek. Problem. There's no planet Nibiru, there's no planet X, and nothing is hurtling toward us. So. What we have discovered is that numerous features of the Kuiper Belt, a field of icy debris beyond the orbit of Neptune, can be understood if the solar system possesses an additional ninth planet that resides well beyond. Who is this guy? Excuse me. He is the, sorry, it's off the screen, Assistant Professor of Planetary Sciences. 
Um, it doesn't see. Yep, that's it. Continue. An additional ninth planet that resides well beyond the orbits of the known planets. When we looked at the outer solar system, we, we, we realized that while most of the, the very distant objects, these objects beyond Neptune, beyond Pluto, most of these objects, they, they all go around the sun and they're all sort of pointing off in all different directions, but the most distant objects all swing out in one direction in, in, in a very strange way that shouldn't happen. And we realized that the only way we could get them to all swing in one direction is if there is a massive planet also very distant in the solar system, keeping them in place while they all go around the sun. And we started looking at this and thinking, this, this, is, this must be either a coincidence or it's uh, caused by something else. It can't be caused by a planet because that's crazy. There are no planets out there. I went from trying very hard to be skeptical that what we were talking about was true to suddenly thinking, oh, this actually might even be true. So the object itself likely is more massive than the Earth, probably a little bit less massive than Neptune. It sits right in between that terrestrial to giant icy planet range. Its orbit, unlike the orbits of the known planets, is not nearly circular and planar. Instead, it is exceptionally wide, 20 times bigger than the orbit of Neptune. The orbital period of the Earth is, of course, one year. And the orbital period of Jupiter, the big player in our solar system, is about 10 years. The orbital period of this putative ninth planet is 20,000 years. We have nothing like it in the solar system, so it's new for us. It is, however, the most common mass of planets that have been found around all of the other stars. People have always looked at all these other planets in this strange mass range and said, wow, I wonder what these are. I don't know what these are because we don't have anything like it in the solar system. Looks like maybe we do. There are many telescopes on the Earth that actually have a chance of being able to find it. And I think that uh, many people will be inspired to use their telescopes. I'm really hoping that as we announce this, people, people start a, uh, a worldwide search to go find this ninth planet. History shows us that it's a bad idea to consistently say we have now reached the end of the solar system and there is nothing beyond what we already know. And all those people who are mad that Pluto is no longer a planet can be thrilled to know that there's a real planet out there still to be found. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and let that run through. So, yeah, good job. All right, so I'm going to just run through really quick because I want to address every every uh, a lot of what these guys are saying. <clears throat> of course, again, I'm not an astrophysicist, but I think I can go ahead and cover most of what they're saying here. Go ahead. Planet X is out there. We'll find it together. Or we'll determine an alternate explanation for the data that we've received so far. Okay. So this individual says, if, if planet X is out there, we will find it together. Um, I don't know about you guys, and this is not hardcore proof that I'm showing right here or anything like that. It's just an opinion. But I don't have a $20 million or $100 million late, uh, um, telescope in my backyard. I don't have an infrared telescope. I, I, I sure don't, no. And I don't think a GoFundMe is gonna, um, if we all pulled our money together and go went and put one in you know, Argentina or Chile, I don't think we're still gonna have enough money. All right, I'm gonna play just What was thought seconds. before, according to research, it's thought to be about 10 times bigger than Earth and would make it the ninth planet. All right, now here's the problem. <clears throat> You cannot determine the size of a planet without determining first its location, okay? We're going to find it together, guys. Isn't that what he said? We're going to find it together. 
doesn't every one of these people, you've already watched it, don't they say that uh, it's out there somewhere? We'll locate it. We're going to find it. You cannot even get close to determining the size of a planet without first determining how far it is away from what it is uh, in, that it is um, influencing gravitationally, okay? <laughs> That's like step one, okay? There are multiple ways to identify where this object is. Number one, you, can, uh, you don't have to actually observe where the planet is. You can observe the influence that it's having on multiple different objects. Planets, is it affecting orbits? And if it is, to what degree is it affecting the orbits? What's the math relation? Here you go. What is the mathematical relationship between the size of the thing that is being affected and the other planet or item or thing that is being affected? What's the relationship between the two of those? What's the varying degrees of change in orbit or any whatever you're observing in those things? You run the math. And you use geometry, <laughs> and I, I, I'm 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 just like, <sighs> here we go. How do scientists measure or calculate the weight of a planet? This article is by Scientific American. Okay, pretty credible. So a sheet metal worker from San Francisco, from uh, from California. Okay, I work in San Francisco. Um. Before reading this article, could figure out pretty much how to determine where this planet is at. But we have Barry uh, Lenert here, a geophysicist at the University of Hawaii, provides the following explanation. We start by determining the mass of the Earth, Isaac, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, law of universal gravitational gravitation tells us that the force of attraction between two objects is proportional the product of their masses divided by the square of the distance between their centers, okay, of their centers of mass. To obtain, to obtain a reasonable approximation, we assume their geographical centers are their center of mass. So I'm not going to go ahead and read this whole thing. That's how you determine the size of a planet. So if NASA is sitting here and they are telling us that they – know that it's relatively uh, 10 times the size of Earth. They had to come up with that based on the math of its location first. Okay? I really apologize that this takes took is taking more than 13 minutes to, to show you guys. But to me, this is a very important video. I am so happy that Jessica shared this. Because I don't know why. Certain things click for certain people. And this one did it for me. Okay? As soon as I saw it, I was listening to this video in the background and uh, when I was reading some other stuff. And I was like, wait a minute. What did that guy just say? And I had to watch it three times. I'm like, did he, is he, are they really all just saying this? <laughs> ah. System is that there's a giant planet, a, a planet that's ten times the mass of the Earth that is much, much further out than... than planet that's 10 times the mass of the earth that yeah. is yeah. much much Got further it. out than 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 ten neptune times, huh? on this very elliptical orbit yeah that's amazing that's really 10 times that's a very specific number not eight not five not 20 not 15 10 10 times that's freaking huge so that the mystery planet right. very elliptical orbit sorry about that Computer simulations show that the mystery planet, if it exists, would orbit about 20 times further away from the sun than Earth. If it exists, you have an observable reaction to something. It's not happening. Guys, you understand what I'm saying, okay? Uh, shit, I don't know. I have a whole bunch of really crappy examples that I could use. They have an observable um, event that is occurring in our solar system. They're all, they all agree on that. They're agreeing that they know the damn, uh, they know the damn orbit. The, they know the damn crap. What's the word? Yes, it's just orbit. If they have an exceptionally big or wide oval orbit. They know the size. 
they're all saying ten times, except for the one idiot that's saying there's nothing out there or anywhere. Oh, okay, then why are you guys observing changes in our solar system and tilt in our Earth right now that is occurring and nothing's causing it? These people are all liars, okay? Liars. If at what each one of them is saying, and they're they're pretending like math is not math, okay? You can't take one plus no other number at all and equal two, okay? They just took the one out and then they presented it to us like we're a bunch of dumb shits. Observe directly. We haven't seen it yet, but we've seen its gravitational influence on the outer part of our solar system. So we, we know it's there. We're starting to look. You don't need to fucking look. Excuse my language, everyone, because they, and I know I keep saying this. They could not have come up with the size without the location. They don't need to see it. I feel like I, should I be a professor at Caltech? I'll walk in there and be like, hey, I don't understand any of your fucking math at all, okay? But I know basic geometry. I'm a sheet metal worker in freaking California. <laughs> and here's your guys' first assignment. Uh, it's basic geometry, okay? Basic geometry. God. Modeled the hypothetical planet's gravitational effects on several known bodies in the region and found a near perfect match. Near perfect match. Uh, I'm sure Caltech doesn't have a uh, $400 laptop like I have, right? They're not working with like an HP that's, uh, you know, that struggles to, um, you know, it's like got two processors or whatever the hell, right? Caltech, I'm pretty sure that they got some bomb crap over there, okay? So their Caltech, their computer models are saying it is a near perfect match. This is, you can't have a go, you can't have a yin and without a yang. You can't have a green light without a red light, you know. Well, there is a yellow, but whatever. Uh, there's, you got to have an up to have a down. People, they know exactly where this thing is at. Why are they lying to you? I was on the fence this morning. I saw this I saw this video. I'm off the fence. 100%. 100%. Why are they lying? Why is everything happening? Why are they starting all these conflicts? Why are they building tunnels? Why are people like Rich saying that many truck drivers are delivering food? I know that many of you already know this stuff. I'm newly awake to this Nibiru thing that I just woke up to right now, today, and I'm excited. And I want other people to realize that this is not some bullshit, okay? They all, – all these people in this video are lying to you. And I don't know. Maybe there's a math genius out there. Prove me wrong, okay? If I'm wrong, I'll do a video and I'll be like, hey, guys, I'm the biggest idiot in the whole fucking planet, okay? I apologize. I totally tried to sell something that wasn't what it is, okay? I'll do that. No problem. No problem problem anyways you guys have a good i believe we're going to the weekend but people are going to be watching this video you know for a while so whatever day it is you have a good one enjoy the days that we have because <sighs> this thing is going to be close it's not going to hit us it doesn't have to hit us it doesn't even have it really doesn't even have to come close okay it's 10 times the size of our planet <laughs> it's 10 um uh it's time we wake up because they're going to lock those fucking doors on those big ass tunnels and they're going to be like, oops, sorry about that. See you in about five, six months when the all this um, <laughs> hell on earth is over and whoever's alive when they come out, well, maybe maybe they'll patch you up. Maybe they'll throw you a freaking granola bar, <laughs> bottled water. Be like, Here you go, buddy. We got you to use water. How, how was it? How'd it go? <laughs> How'd it go out here? Shit, we, hey, we tried to call you. Yeah, the fucking phones are down, man. Yeah. You didn't get the email? Fuck. Man, ugh. Anyways, all right, you guys have a good one.